Hi, in this video I will show how I made an MPPT charge controller with IoT integration. In this project I have used Arduino Nano as controller unit and ESP01S for connecting with internet via Wi-Fi and this synchronous back converter for DC-DC conversion. At first I will talk about the back converter circuit. I have used here TL494 PWM controller which was cheap and easy to find in the online market. TL494 has two error amplifiers, one of which I have used for the voltage regulation and another for current control. It has a self oscillating circuit, the frequency of the oscillator is controlled by this RT and CT. The PWM output is provided through two NPN transistors with floating emitter and floating collector, which gives the design flexibility. The output transistors can be programmed either in push-pull mode or in parallel mode. Push-pull mode is suitable for the synchronous converters, but in this project I have used them in parallel mode, although uh, I am designing a synchronous bar converter. This is because with the push-pull mode, the maximum duty cycle can be 47% as the transistors are switched in alternate cycles of the oscillator and there is a minimum 3% dead time. But my design demands a maximum duty cycle of 88%. Uh, now to get the synchronous gate triggers, I have used one transistor in common emitter mode and another in common collector mode. Remember I have told before that the output transistors are in floating emitter and floating collector. This allowed me to uh, use two transistors in two different configurations. And we get two PWM signals inverted to each other. But still the problem is not solved yet. Because there is no date time between the signals for high side and low side gate triggering. To add a date time. The two signals are passed through two transistors in inverting mode. Due to the parasitic capacitors, the transistors make slight delay to turn off. And the voltage here remains low until the transistor is fully turned off. This introduces a date time of around 182 to 43 nanoseconds between the high side and low side gate pulses. And finally, the gate pulses are sent to this IR2110 high side low side gate drive IC. The output voltage is fed back through this voltage divider and the voltage can be adjusted by this potentiometer. Arduino pin D9 sends a PWM signal for controlling the output voltage which is converted to DC by this RC filter and then it is added to the feedback voltage via this diode. So the Arduino can decrease the output voltage but cannot increase more than the value set by this feedback network. Three major parts for designing a DC-DC converter are the choice of inductor, output capacitor and designing the phase compensator. The value of the inductor in the DC-DC converter mainly depends on the output current, switching frequency and duty cycle. In this circuit I am using this 5.6 micro Henry inductor from Burns which is rated for 12 ampere. The necessary output capacitor is calculated as 16640 microfarad. I have taken 4 470 microfarad electrolytic capacitors in parallel to reduce the ESR value. For the same purpose I have also added a 0 0.1 microfarad ceramic disk capacitor. Now the most important part for achieving the stability of the system is to design a proper phase compensator which is really really a tedious job. I will briefly talk about it. Detailed discussion can be a uh, topic of another video. Here I am using a type 2 phase compensator which has a pole at 0 frequency then a 0 at 1 kilohertz then a pole again at 100 kilohertz. The crossover frequency is at 20 kilohertz which is approximately one tenth of the switching frequency. The switching frequency is determined by RT and CT based on this equation. For the phase compensator design I have taken help from an application note by Infineon. 
the link of the article and my handwritten notes for the calculations I am giving in the description below. I am very much thankful to Professor Sam Ben Yaakov for his excellent videos on PWM circuit design. He also helped me to understand how to use Nyquist and Bode plots in real life to make a system stable. If you are interested to go deep into the circuit design or simulation, I would highly recommend you to check out Professor Yaakov's YouTube channel. The link of his channel you will get in the description. Ok, let us get back into the circuit design. To give a soft start, the pin dead time control or DTC is connected to the capacitor and resistor network. During startup, the capacitor is a discharge condition, so it will act like a short circuit between 5 volt and the DTC pin. This invokes a 100% dead time or 0% duty cycle at the output. As the time goes, the capacitor charges through this resistor and the voltage at DTC gradually comes down to 0 volt. This gradually decreases the dead time from maximum 100% to the internally limited minimum value of 3%. This 10 kilo ohm resistor acts like a bleeder resistor and discharges the capacitor after power off. These two op amps amplify the current sense voltages on the shunt resistors connected in the input and output sides. The outputs of the op amps are sent to the analog pins of Arduino. I have made the circuit on a pref board. I have tried to keep the program as simple as possible. Digital pin 9 is programmed to output SPWM signal to control the output voltage. If the duty cycle is set to minimum, the voltage output will be maximum and vice versa. It takes 4 inputs, PV voltage, output voltage, PV current and output current. At the beginning of the loop, the 4 input parameters are read. If the output current is below 0.1 ampere, it goes to null state, which means it will not take any control on the output voltage. If the load current is greater than 0.1 ampere, then it will be in either DINC or DDCR mode. DINC state means the duty cycle of the SPWM at pin D9 will gradually increase and the output voltage will gradually decrease. DDCR is exactly opposite to that. If the program is DINC state and finds that the PV power has been reduced and PV voltage has been increased, then it decreases the SPWM duty cycle by 1, meaning increases the output voltage by 1 step and changes the state to DDCR. If the DDCR state is set and PV power is reduced, then SPWM duty cycle is increased by 1 and the state is changed to DINC. Otherwise, SPWM duty cycle is decreased by 1. A 16 by 2 LCD is interfaced through I square C communication and the ESP01S is communicating through TX and RX means using serial communication protocols. Now, it's the time for the final demo. I have this 50 watt PV panel. I am going to charge this 12 volt 42 ampere hour data seed battery. PV is connected to the circuit. The blue light on the ESP module blink and turned off means it, it successfully connected to the Wi-Fi. The LCD is displaying something, I will zoom into it later. First I will connect the battery. The first row of the LCD is showing the PV voltage and PV current and the bottom row is displaying output voltage and output current. The ESP module is connected to the hotspot of this mobile phone hiding underneath the shadow of the panel. 
I came to my laptop and I have logged into io.adaptor.com and opened the dashboard of my device. The PV panel is generating around 34 watt and the output is around 27 to 28 watt. The efficiency is approximately 80 to 81 percent which is not astonishingly good but I think it is a good move after the failure in my last MPPT project. Here I have used a linear voltage regulator 7805 for 5 volt supply. I believe replacing it with a switching regulator like LM2576, the efficiency can be improved to some extent. One problem I am facing with the circuit is that if I am connecting a low resistance in the output instead of the battery, then the gate driver IC is getting burned. I have no clue why is this happening. If someone has any idea uh, why it might be happening, then please write in the comment section. So that's it with this video. Thanks for watching. Please like and share this video and don't forget to subscribe this channel. I will come back in another video with a new project. Until then, stay happy and feel and enjoy the creative electronics.